r slash pro revenge. Read your damn emails. Karen. I used to work in an office. What kind of work isn't particularly important to the story so just picture a basic office job. Every January, HR would send an email to all employees with the employee handbook. This included job descriptions, office policies, etc. Every year since the PDF handbook had been established it would be named with the year following it to establish it was different than the original and all other years. Any changes would have updated next to the section in the table of contents so you could see what had changed from the previous year and familiarize yourself with anything new. Now with that background, we will introduce Karen. Karen had been with the company a pretty long time. About 10 years I believe. She was fine at her job. Just fine. She would get things done. But not without making everyone else miserable in the process. She would ask questions that had already been answered. And basically just waste everyone's time for fun. She was just plain nasty to people. And tried as hard as she could to make everyone stay far away from her. The worst thing about her. Was she always seemed to be looking for a fight or looking for a reason to complain. She had threatened lawsuits a few times over any small thing. But would always just get over it and drop it bc she knew no laws had been broken and it would never go anywhere. She'd comment on how she should sue basically every business she ever went to because she could live off the settlement and retire early. Over the smallest issues you can imagine. She did her job and we never had a valid reason to fire her. Especially knowing how lawsuit happy she was. So she stayed. Karen's job description. As per the handbook. Called for a bachelor's degree. Karen did not have a bachelor's degree. But had been hired prior to that being a requirement so she was grandfathered in. One day, a position above hers became open. A guy who we will call Terry had recently completed his master's degree after taking night classes for a few years, and since an internal promotion is typically better than an outside hire, he was chosen for the promotion. Terry had been at the company about 4.5 years, and was well liked and great at his job. The new job required a master's degree in its job description. And him being a recent grad it was a perfect fit and everyone was happy for him. Everyone but Karen. Since she was constantly looking for something to sue about. She took it as a direct insult that she had not been considered for this promotion that she was not at all qualified for. She immediately cried discrimination and told our boss a lawyer would be in touch. We were all perplexed. Since it was very clear that this position required a master's degree and given that she didn't even have a bachelor's degree there is no way she could have been hired for the role. What we soon realized was that Karen had saved the original company handbook named company handbook and had not bothered to open or save any new editions that were sent in the following 8 years. She just assumed no changes had been made and that it was just sent every year to ensure all employees had it. If she has bothered to open the file, she would have seen the sections that say updated in the table of contents. Since Karen cried lawsuit a lot, no one expected much of this since it was ridiculous claim. But sure enough, Karen gives her resignation letter via an email and it is scathing. About how she can't bear to work in such a discriminatory environment that would only promote men. When any higher ups try to speak to her about this and clear up the confusion. She basically tells them to duck off and to read the damn email. I don't know any more of an explanation. She basically goes full Karen. Not long after, a letter comes in from her lawyer asking for a settlement to avoid a discrimination case. What Karen hadn't realized was that our boss's sister-in-law owned a law firm. She didn't really take on clients herself anymore and mostly just managed the other lawyers of her firm. She was basically semi-retired. What this meant was she had plenty of time to review any letters from Karen's lawyer and advise us. But since Karen didn't bother to read any of the updated handbooks, she was unaware that this position had required a master's degree for many years now, I believe about 6 years. She supplied her lawyer with the original company handbook from 9 years ago, and he used that as reference in his settlement demand. This was when we realized she hadn't read any new handbooks in years. Since Karen rubbed a lot of people the wrong way, boss's sister-in-law decided to personally take on the case. Every letter Karen's lawyer sent, she sent back one three times in length. Some of it wouldn't even really say anything, just wordiness. But it would certainly take Karen's lawyer a while to read it, and he did not come cheap. After several of these letters, they realize no settlement is going to happen. They want to take it to court. It's a pretty cut and dry case. 
Boss's sister-in-law shows evidence that Karen has received all updates via email. After the change was made in the handbook sent out, HR even sent an email to Karen specifically letting her know that she was grandfathered in and doesn't need to worry, to which Karen replied okay, thank you. Confirming receipt of it, the best part was when bosses still said that they couldn't break company rules to give Karen a job she was totally unqualified for while neglecting another employee who went above and beyond to get his master's degree to advance, as that would be unfair to all other employees. Karen now had a huge, seriously, huge, bill from her lawyer for all of these letters and filing the case, etc. No job, no one she could list as a positive recommendation and no degree. In the time she had been at the company, it had become industry standard to require a bachelor's degree. So she was effectively shut out of her career. It would also be hard to explain how you worked somewhere for a decade and don't have a letter of recommendation from anyone there, if she had only read her damn emails. Guy steals $400 of gas, but I get the last laugh. Backstory. I used to work at a marina when I was in high school that sold gas and allowed people to dock for free if they wanted to. Now one day a guy comes in on a pretty big boat comes in and gets a lot of gas. Like $400 worth of gas. He comes to the counter to pay and gives me $400 in $100 bills and I accept them and he goes on his merry way. Fast forward a week or so and I am told by my boss that the bills he paid in were all counterfeit bills. Unfortunately as he paid in cash we had no way of tracking him down. So we think that he just got away with stealing $400 worth of gas. That is until this idiot comes back after about a month and a half. Thinking he got away with stealing the gas. When he comes back and I recognize the guy and tell my co-worker to call the police right away. However, I knew that this guy would just leave if I let on that I had recognized him and we had discovered his plot to get free gas. So I decide to pretend I don't recognize him. Luckily for me this guy asks to dock the boat for an hour or so on our dock and I tell it's not a problem. Now it is policy to get the name and phone number of customers using free dockage. As well as asking that they leave their keys in the boat so that we can move the boat to a different dock if needed. He complies to all of the rules and leaves his boat. And he leaves his keys with me. After probably about 15 minutes of waiting the police show up on the dock and ask my boss where the guy is. My boss tells them he just left his boat but we have his number and can get him to come back to the boat and he then instructs me to do just that. At this point I was pissed at this dude for making me look dumb for basically losing $400. So I call and tell him. Hey, this is me from Marina. It seems as though there is an issue with your engine and it seems to be smoking. For those that don't know boats that well, engines are very expensive and this one in particular was a 350 horsepower Yamaha engine, which is top of the line so that man got back to that boat in record time. When he got back to the boat the look on his face when he saw two cops waiting for him was priceless. He tried to play it off and act like he had done nothing wrong and he didn't know why the police were there. But that was short lived as they arrested him and told him why he was being arrested. Turns out the guy had almost 2 grand in counterfeit $100 bills on him. I catfished one of my high school teachers because he was bullying me. Some background. He knew my dad because my dad, a lawyer had represented his ex-wife several years before in a super bitter divorce. For some reason he took out that frustration on me. He would verbally abuse me in front of the class. If I raised my hand to answer a question, he would roll his eyes before calling on me and loudly say to the class listen to what OP says. That way you will know what the wrong answers are. He would criticize my work, make comments about how I'll never amount to much because obviously I have a learning disability. I don't. He was just being a prick. I would often get marked down for penmanship, but after asking some classmates, apparently I was the only one being graded on that. I know history wasn't my best subject, but the way I was being treated was totally uncalled for. I began to have anxiety to go to that class. I would dread it all day. My friends would even mention casually yet. Yeah, Mr. Smith really doesn't like OP. What did you do to him bro haha? My dad was pissed that he was obviously being biased towards me for something I had nothing to do with. Dad made noise and tried to get me moved into another class. But the district and school were over capacity as it was. I couldn't move classes without displacing another student. And the school didn't think that would be fair to the other student. 
But it's fair to me to let this keep going on because you can't move me WTF. Now, my dad never discussed details of his cases. But I had overheard him angrily telling my mom, after our meeting with the principal, that he doesn't like that I'm in that duck in pedophiles class. An idea was planted in my head, and it started to grow. I devised a plan. I gathered social media pics of a girl, who was underage and went to another school, and made some profiles on Kick and WhatsApp using a Google voice number from our city. I changed her name for obvious reasons. Once I had him hooked on the made up 17 year old girl, I sent all the chat logs and pics he sent to her to the principal and the school district main office using every email address I could find on the school district website and social media pages. Within 3 days of the emails being sent, we had a sub. All we were told was that Mr. Smith had to take some time off due to personal issues. I still don't know what happened to him after that. I graduated about 3 months after he was put on leave, and never heard from or saw him again. I joined the military and left town about 6 months after this all happened, and have not returned to that city since. One of my friends, who still lives there, told me a while back he saw him working the deli counter at a grocery store not far from where the high school. I never told a single soul, and nobody knows it was me. The rumor mill went wild about him being a pedophile. But nobody knew I had anything to do with it, even though I benefited the most from his departure. I imagine they tracked the girl down and asked her, but she obviously didn't know him. However, the chat logs from WhatsApp show the girl telling him she was 17 about 3 days before he sent the first of many pictures of his junk. So that was probably enough to at least get him fired and lose his teaching certification. I don't regret it, but I would never go so far on anyone again. I was a bitter, moody teen, but when you're being bullied by someone with authority over you, you have to do what you have to do to survive. Edit. I am a dude. Edit 2. I have been trying to answer all the questions, so here are some answers to the main ones I'm seeing. In the state this all happened in, the age of consent is 16. Legally he could have hooked up with her. I was never looking to get him in legal trouble, just mess with him enough to get him out of my life. That's all. I agree it was messed for me to use her pics. I was 17, and I didn't know any girls I would have been comfortable asking hey, wanna catfish Mr. Smith and ruin his life? Also don't tell anyone. I picked her because she went to a different school across town. I had met her at a couple parties and she had a lot of mirror selfies posted on her FB and Insta, and I needed it to feel authentic to him. I only needed 8-10 selfies, and another reason I chose her was she was blonde with a slender body type. I was able to find many girls on reddit who didn't show their face and fit that loose description. I used 2-3 gone wild pics from one user's account when he pushed me for nudes. I told him, the girl, didn't have any social media because she was into older guys, and they don't want anyone to know. So I don't have social media to make them more comfortable. In hindsight, I feel like he should have been suspicious of a 17 year old girl without social media. So maybe it's a little on him too. Got his cell number from a classmate. Who had it because he was one of the many assistant coaches for our football team. Most of the team had it because they had all exchanged phone numbers at a retreat the team went on the prior summer. I texted him out of the blue saying I saw him at a football game our schools had played earlier in the year, and I thought he was cute. He felt out the situation at first, but it was obvious after I sent the first selfie of hers that he was hooked. I would only give him a selfie if he really begged for it, and the more he begged, the more flirty I would act. We never sexted. I barely knew at that age what to say anyway. I would describe the vibe I went with as awkwardly forward. Also, I never asked specifically for dong pics. He arrived at that juncture on his own. Caught me off guard when it happened. I texted him using the Google voice number for a while. Then told him my mom read my texts but didn't know about WhatsApp or how it worked. I didn't even make the whole pitch. He heard that and immediately suggested we message on there. And then encouraged me to delete our regular text convo once we were talking there. To this day I have no idea why my dad called him a pedophile. Maybe his ex-wife told my dad when he was handling her divorce about something he did. The tone I heard him say it in led me to believe that something like this would be worth a shot. Obviously his ex my dad took him to the cleaners in the divorce settlement. Hence what kicked off this whole series of events. Bro, you made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. 
Smash like and subscribe for more curated content. Molite. It's free and that's a great price.